Welcome back. It's time for our hot topic of the day. And we've been joined by Mr. Omoshola Deji, political affairs analyst, to take a look at the crisis rocking the Labour Party. And once day we saw the two factions of the Labour Party turn the, the court, the, the, the tribunal court, into a battlefield. And then on Thursday, another thing happened. The chairman, the national chairman of the party, Julius Aburi, and the three other national executive members announced their return. They said that they have gone to the appeal court and that the appeal court has signed their appeal. And so they are back. We shall be taking a look at this right now with our guest. Hello, Mr. Moshala. Glad to have you join us. Glad to have you join us. Mr. Moshala, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, good. Time. Good. So first of all, tell me um, your thoughts on the announcement made yesterday by Julius Abure and the other three executive members of the Labour Party, that they have gone to the appeal and that uh, the appeal has been signed on, so they are back. Well, if the appeal has been signed on, then it is um, normal for them to take back their position because the, the appeal court being a higher court than the court of first instance that sat them on the basis of um, forgery. So if they have gone to the higher court, in this instance, the court of appeal, and the court has looked at their argument, and in the wisdom of the court, the court now says, okay, um, go back to your position pending the determination of the case before it, then it, um, it is legal. It is constitutional for them to be back in that position to the court says otherwise. So what is now left for the aggrieved party is now, which I think is the Apapa faction, is for them to perhaps approach the Supreme Court and place their argument before the Supreme Court on why um, Abure should not be reinstated. Or perhaps they can also approach the same court to kind of like um, make one or two arguments on why maybe the judges at the appeal court should um, have a rethink on the restatement of Abure. Until that is done, Abure is legally bound to resume sitting as the um, chairman of the Labour Party. All this drama playing out around the Labour Party is definitely not making the party look good because, I mean, um, we had hoped that this party would have been able to uh, sustain its position as a very, very strong third force in the national politics. Today, the Labour Party case will be you know, up for hearing. Today, Friday, uh, in the 19th of May, that their case will be up for hearing. Um, why would you say the party has had this difficulty in closing its ranks? And, and making necessary compromise in the interests of the party? Well, good question. Um, either ways, there's bound to be crisis in the Labour Party. If Peter Obi had won, there's still bound to be crisis. Because if a candidate moves from one party, in this instance, the PDP, to the Labour Party, he's going to come with his own... Um, political foot soldiers with his own disciples. And they are people who have seen themselves as an institution within an institution within the Labour Party. These people, their interests will feel threatened. And by the, um, the, 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 the kind of like emergence of Peter Obi as the party's candidate and the strong influence, the surprise that, you know, he, he sprung up during the election, Definitely, it has shown that he is a factor in Nigerian politics today. So, and it has also shown that Peter Obi is not going to be a one-off candidate. So, if the stakeholders of the Labour Party before Peter Obi joined, if they are considering that, okay, perhaps he's going to lose the election and we're going to have our party back. They have seen that, oh, this man has come to stay and they have to play second fiddle for perhaps the next four years. And in that next four years, Peter Obi is going to likely contest again, whether he wins at the tribunal or not. So they are seeing that they are going to be playing second fiddle in perpetuity. So that alone, it's a threat to them, and they are surely going to fight back. So if Peter Obi had won the 
election, there will be conflict. But the conflict will not be big as this because he has enough appointment at his disposal to share to um, both the um, old stakeholders of the party and the new stakeholder. But because he lost the election, definitely the people there who had been placed second fiddle, who are the original builders of the party, definitely they would revolt. Then we also need to look at the political side. Labour Party um, is a party that doesn't have much financial war chest. And Peter Obi is playing against people that are stupendously rich, people that are, you, you know, um, political game masters. And in that kind of instance, they will not only play the game at the polls, at the ballot, they will also play it across board, which is to perhaps spring up conflict within the Labour Party itself to destabilize Peter Obi, and they have all the resources at their disposal, at their well without to achieve that. So either which way, there's bound to be crisis in the Labour Party, and this crisis will most likely go down when the Supreme Court decide the presidential election petition. If the crisis goes down, what that tells you is that all this is being triggered by people of other political parties who feel threatened by the Peter Obi candidacy and his argument at the court. But if it persists after the presidential election tribunal, then it shows that, okay, it is the um, natural agreement of the old stakeholders of the party. But time will surely reveal the cause it soon. Well, the Apapa faction has made moves to withdraw the petition election, uh, you know, and but, <coughs> but the Electoral Petition uh, Act 2022, Section 29, uh, subsection one does not empower one applicant to withdraw where petitioners are more than one. And it's also interesting that this same Papa has denied being a mole, be denied being sponsored by external forces. Um, what's your thoughts on this? Well, the Papa faction cannot um, withdraw the suit at the tribunal because um, Peter will be himself went to court as a person. He has lawyers there. So um, the, 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 even if Papa is the chairman of the party, for example, if he tries to withdraw the suit, there's no way he's going to separate himself from Peter Obi, who is the candidate of the party and who is willing to pursue the cause of justice as regards the presidential election. So it will be very difficult for whether they are Papa or they are Bure faction to say they want to withdraw the case at the the, um, the the presidential election tribunal. The case is going to go on and it's going to go on to the end, except if um, the two the two in one, well, you know, um, I'll refer to them as two in one, Labour Party and Peter will be jointly decide to withdraw at the presidential election tribunal, which I don't see that happening, except if that happens Definitely the case is going to go on because Peter Obi is a party to the case and he is well represented. All right. Okay, just hold your thought there. Um, we'll, um, I've been informed that uh, we have someone else joining us uh, to have this discussion on Moshala. I'm sure you'll agree with me that the more the merrier. Uh, we have sure. Barrister Justice Uwebu, human rights lawyer, joining us from Abuja. Hello, Justice. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you this Friday? I'm good. I'm fine. All right. So we, we, we've, we've, I've been discussing with Omoshola <laughs> on the drama unfolding in the camp of the Labour Party. Tell us your take on what happened yesterday. I mean, on Wednesday, we saw the drama that ensued at the court, the Electoral Tribunal Court. And then on Thursday, we have Abure and the other three announcing that they are back. Why didn't well, they? Why didn't they go to the? Why didn't they go to the appeal earlier than yesterday? Why didn't we have this before now? Why did they allow all the no, drama that's ensued before now? <laughs> I, I'm laughing because I think the whole thing is a drama, and uh, well, that's the beauty of democracy. Anyway, uh, if you remember, Fela said democracy is democracy. 
Hmm. So that is one of the things we have to get, and that is one of the students we have to get. The only problem I have is that, you know, that unfortunately we are pressing it the wrong way. You understand the thing? And uh, but let us also understand one part. Hmm. Uh, constitutionally, uh, any person who is contesting election is contesting under a political party. And that is why the political party sponsors the person. You run in the name of the political party. So when you begin to have issues or have issues with your political party, it is not good at all. In fact, it doesn't show a good one. It can send a wrong signal. And one way or the other, it will affect the person that uh, is actually the candidate. Because the candidate does not just imagine. Remember that if not, things we are equal. And that is why some of us have been earlier before that clamoring for independent candidates. So you cannot separate the party from the candidates. It's not possible. It is the party. You, you fly the, the flag of the party. And during election, it is not your name that is there. It is the logo and the name of the political party. So vis-a-vis, -vis, but the courts, at the end of the day, the, the, the five wise women will, will, will take a decision when they are getting on the matter. So we should be very, very careful. And that is why with this thing that is happening now, the Abuli fashion, the Apapa fashion, and all the rest, some saying they are with us, some not saying that. Nigerians will begin to know and appreciate the fact and the reason why we have been pushing for independent candidates. I love what is happening. So are you saying, Justice, that if a uh, if a papa had succeeded or if he eventually succeeds at withdrawing the party's uh, election petition, that that would be the end of the road for Peter Obi? As far as I'm concerned, personally, my opinion, if you look at the position, it is the party that sponsors a candidate. Nobody goes there on a personal note. You must run under the party, and the party must support you. The party must give you the flag. You must run under the logo and the name of the party. But these are some lacunas we have in the constitution. And I know what is happening now, so that we can look at you holistically and see where amendment is needed. Like I said, let me tell you it again. If we have independent candidate, can somebody come out in the name of a political party that is running a suit? For example, Justice Uwebu has filed in court. You did not sponsor me. I did not run under your political party. I ran under as an individual as an independent candidate. So what are we saying? That's why I said that I love what is happening. Nigerians will begin to appreciate why some of us have been pushing for independent candidates in Nigeria. Amoshala, please come in here. Let's have your thought on this. You are a political scientist. Well, I believe that um while the um, my co-panelist was speaking. Uh, I was trying to remember the particular case, but um, I was unable to. There's a, um, maybe it would um, help me out on that. Um, the, the court, the, the, there was an election petition where the court gave a judgment based on a technicality that the, um, the person was not included. I think maybe it was it, it, the case of Ondo, but I'm not sure. You know? So you, you can't separate the person from the party, because in that particular case, I'm trying to remember the case, maybe you can help me out. The court gave a judgment that, okay, the party is included, fine. But the person who is standing for the party in this instance was not included. And the court ruled against them, them, the person based on that particular technicality. But I really can't remember them. The case, but I think it would not be fair to the cause of justice if, with the crisis in Labour Party, the Apapa faction had been able to, for instance, withdraw the case at the presidential election tribunal when the um, the case against that particular leadership is still in court. For example, if the if Apapa had been able to withdraw the case. What then happens on the long run if the Supreme Court rules in favor of the Abure faction? Whenever there is a case in court, what the case, what the court is interested in is ensuring that justice is served. Would that have served justice on Peter Obi as a candidate? Would that have served justice on the over six million Nigerians that voted for him? So these are the things we need to look at. Except if, if the 
the party can go ahead and withdraw the case, then the National Assembly should be able to put it into law that that is only if there is no dispute as regards the leadership of the party in court. And there must be a signature of the particular candidate itself so that when there are crises, a faction of the party will not go and jeopardize the interest of the candidate as it seems to be the case in the case of the Labour Party president. <laughs> Justice, mm -hmm. do you remember the <laughs> case he was referring to? Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you remember the case that Omoshala was trying to remember? Yeah, he's, he's, he's referring to the case of Wondo, the case of Wondo. In fact, there are so many decided cases on that. But let me also point, that's why I said I love what is happening. Let me also point out, when a party, when somebody contests election, like for example, I'm from Imo State, it happens in uh, Imo, North Senatoria the District, 2019. When a party contests election, a candidate contests election, and at the end of the day, the logo of the party did not reflect in the ballot paper. That election is null. Because the person that, con that contested the election or the party that contested the election will go to court to say that their, their rights has been infringed on. And what will I then do? I then will have to cancel that election because the name of the candidate is not in the ballot paper. What is in the ballot paper is the, is, is the logo of the party and the name of the party. You see, I, let us appreciate what we're saying. He says something, and which is right. The problem we're having now is that there is a spending matter in court to determine who is actually the national chairman of the party. That is where we're having issues and discrepancies. So based on that, the matter is to some duties. So if you're acting, if Abure, uh, Abure is acting as the national chairman and uh, Papa is acting as national chairman, the matter is still pending. So based on that premise, nobody has the locus or the right now to say he's going to withdraw on behalf of the party because the court has not made a pronouncement. Okay, as it is right... has made a pronouncement, yes. Yeah, now that Abure has gotten this, has gone to appeal and has gotten the signature of the appeal court, that makes him right now the national chairman. Does it or does it not? No, 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 no. You see... The matter, like I said, the matter is still sub judice. Mm. Abure has gone on appeal, mm. and the court has not made a pronouncement. But remember that after appeal, the matter will be also pushed to the third floor, which is the Supreme Court. It's only when the Supreme Court takes a decision and makes an order, then it becomes law. There's no choice about it. But now, the matter is still sub judice. They are still under, how do I put it, the, 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 the fireworks of of, of legal battle. Mm. And let me also say, we talk about um, um, technicality, technicality. Yes, I agree. But the, the Supreme Court has also warned that technical justice is not justice. Let's be realistic to ourselves. But like I said, I appreciate and love what is happening. I will, this will make us to begin to push more and further. If you remember, the, just the last um, National Assembly Amendment um, of the constitution. One of the amendments they brought down was the issue of independent candidates. But how many Nigerians supported it? How many of these political parties supported it? They know what they are doing. Because they know that it will water down the power of the political party. Mm -hmm. What you are seeing playing today is because there are no internal democracy in the political parties. And that is why they are fighting the issue of independent candidates. Because let me tell you the truth. If you have independent candidates today in Nigeria, I personally justice we don't want to run under any political party. Because there's no internal democracy in in fact we don't have political parties in Nigeria. Mm. What you have in Nigeria is selfish interest groups. So right now Abure is a substantive national chairman of the party. Well, as as it is, because for now the court has not made an, an appeal has been filed. And I know the other party will still not be waiting. Once, once the matter is in court, it's some duties. You cannot say this person is this person is this because it's already before the court. Okay. Until the court takes, makes a pronouncement. 
All right, Amoshala, just before we go, both of you do answer this. Um, the party had set up a security, peace, and conflict resolution committee uh, right before the general elections, if I understand correctly. Uh, yes, before the general elections, they set up that committee. How, how is it that they've not been able, this committee, the elders of this party, the Labour Party, have not been able to resolve the conflict and have allowed it to linger to this point, where it's almost a, seeming as if it can jeopardize their chances at the presidential election tribunal? Before I answer your question, um, I was trying to learn from uh, my co-panel, my brother there. Um, when you ask him that, is Abure the substantive chairman of the party now, based on the ruling of the appeal court, having vacated the um, order of the high court that sacked him. I didn't get his clear position on that. I was looking forward to learn from him on that. We know he's um, subjudice, but with the ruling of the appeal court, who is the chairman of the Labour Party now? Is it the Abure or is it still the, um, is it still the Abapa faction? Because I think it is the Abure faction because the court of higher instance haven't vacated the order of the high court that sacked um, Abure yeah, in the first instance. But I was looking forward to his response, so maybe he can um, help me out on that um, when it is. The Leonard Fellow is but afraid to come and take a position, from what I understand. Uh, he's trying, he's threading softly uh, because he's in court. If I understand you, Justice, is that it? Yeah, you know, we lawyers, we always come uh, careful when we're talking about matters that are safe. But let me, let me answer him that it's a very simple thing. For the fact that uh, uh, the, the Court of Appeal has made the pronouncement, for now, it stands as it. Okay, um, as regards the question you asked, um, why are we waiting for the connection of my brother to be uh, okay? As regards the question you, you asked, it will be difficult for um, the, the, the people that were set up to manage the conflict in the political party to achieve any aim if they themselves are interested minds, if they um, if they have a side, hardly will you find anybody in the Labour Party today um, that doesn't have a side, whether an interest in the Apapa or the Apure faction. Once the interest is made known and it's known to um, people, members of the political party, it will be difficult for them to trust the position of those um, committees that were sort of to resolve the conflict in the first place. I think my brother's network is, um, um, is back, so are you the floor to Yeah, me? Justice, can you hear us now? Yeah, 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 I can hear you. What I was trying to say in event is that for the fact that the Court of Appeal has vacated that other order and, con and confirming Abure, the substantive chairman, yes, it stands. But the problem we have there, remember, I don't know who we had that even the other party has gone to court to challenge that uh, vacation of the Court of Appeal. And if that is the truth, which means status quo remains. Because once the matter is in court, you cannot take a decision on it. On, that's why I say that the matter will have to go to the court floor, which is the Supreme Court. So if actually he has filed uh, 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 this thing to the Supreme Court, which means for now, every action has to be stayed until the Supreme Court makes a pronouncement. Wow. All right. Well, that's the much uh, time will permit us to take um, this. Uh... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I'm quickly, quickly before we go, like the question you asked. You see, you. Network is not allowing Justice to give us his uh, final take on this. Hello, Justice. Well, Justice. Uhwebu, Barrister Justice Uhwebu, human rights lawyer, joined us from Abuja to take a look at this subject, as well as Mr. Omoshola Deji, a political affairs analyst. He's a political scientist. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your thoughts, your insight, and your time this morning as we took a look at this very critical matter on the break. Thanks for getting the title right, and thanks for having me. <laughs> okay. Thanks for your time. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll be back with sports in a moment. Stay with us.